Today, we are excited about trying a great new product. It's the Everfun Hydration Backpack, perfect for short or long trips, like hiking, going to the beach, going to the gym, or just taking long walks in nature. This sweat-free, lightweight backpack comes with Hydration Expert for hands-free and cool water, with a compartment that keeps your water cool for up to six hours. It comes with ultra-elastic 3D back padding and shoulder straps that are breathable and great for reducing stress when on the go. It also comes with many compartments to store your other essentials, like your favorite snacks, clothing items, your cell phone, and any other item that you might need while on your adventure. So follow the link below to get the Everfun Hydration Backpack and put some fun in your wild. Peace, family. It's the Unapologetic Nomads. We're going to have a GoFundMe for new equipment. We really want to have top-notch equipment. And we can start doing content that is, is able to go on networks and stuff like that. Apps like Netflix and different apps like that. Any amount that you choose to donate is perfectly okay with us. We are fine. We just thank you for finding it in your heart, the willingness to give. Thank you so much. So some of the things we are trying to purchase with this donation money is... Um, cameras, drones, and other equipment we're going to be needing if we want to make better content for you. Uh, we really want to take our channel to the next level, and we definitely would appreciate if uh, you can support us in doing that. If we reach our goal, great. If not, it's still cool. You know, we just want to bring you the best content that we can give you, family. I said the best content that we could give you. Today, we decide to take a trip to the National History Museum in Mayburg to learn about the history of the island country of Mauritius. Upon arrival, we find ourselves approaching a beautiful mansion set in a picturesque setting among trees and park benches. And we find out that this mansion dates back to the 18th century. Presently, it houses the National History Museum. It was formerly known as the Naval Museum as it exhibited several artifacts from underwater archaeological expeditions from the Bay of Grand Port. Unfortunately, visitors are not allowed to take recordings or pictures of the inside of the museum. However, we learn many interesting facts about the history of this country. First, we learned that the island had for some long time remained unknown and uninhabited. It was stated that Mauritius was probably visited by Arab sailors during the Middle Ages and the Portuguese sailor Domingo Fernandes Pereira was possibly the first European to land on the island at about around 1511. Mauritius is indeed a country of many cultures, specifically people of Indian, African, French, and Chinese descent. There also exists a harmony of many religious groups, namely Hindus, Christians, Muslims, Catholics, and Buddhists. In 1598, a Dutch squadron under the orders of Admiral Weybrian van Warwick landed at Grand Port and named the island Mauritius in honor of Prince Maurice van Nassau of Holland. However, it was not until 1638 that there was a first attempt of a Dutch settlement. The first Dutch settlement lasted only 20 years. The Dutch finally left Mauritius in 1710. Unfortunately, during this time, the Dutch stripped the country of its valuable ebony trees in the early 17th century and killed off the now extinct dodo bird. Abandoned by the Dutch, the island became a French colony when in September of 1715, Guillaume Dufresne de Salle landed and took possession of this precious port of call on the route to India. He named the island Isle de France, but it was only in 1721 that the French started their occupation. Around 1735, with the arrival of French governor May de la Bourdonnais, Isle of France started developing. However, during this time of development, the French imported African slave labor from the countries of Mozambique, Zanzibar, and Madagascar to work on their sugar plantations. During the late 18th century, African slaves accounted for around 80% of the island's population, and by the early 19th century, there were well over 60,000 slaves on the island. In 1814, Britain took over, and slavery was abolished two decades later in 1835. 
This was believed to be because of the uprisings of the French Revolution and the retaliation of enslaved communities in the British colonies. This was an important turning point because without slaves, the sugar plantations had to bring in some 500,000 indentured servants from India. The planters received a compensation of two million pounds sterling for the loss of their slaves who had been brought in from Mozambique, Zanzibar, and Madagascar during the French occupation. The Indian immigrants were later joined by a small number of Chinese traders. Cultivation of sugarcane was given a boost and the island flourished, especially with the export of sugar to England. Economic progress gave rise to improvement of means of communication, and gradually an adequate infrastructure was created. An 1886 constitution allowed Franco-Mauritians and some Mauritian Creoles, or people who could trace their roots to continental and Malagasy Africans, to become national representatives, and a 1948 constitution gave all literate adults the right to vote. After general elections in 1967, Mauritius adopted a new constitution, and independence was proclaimed on the 12th of March, 1968. Mauritius achieved the status of republic 24 years later on March 12, 1992. Today, Mauritius prides itself as the melting pot of cultures and religions living together as one nation. This is The Unapologetic Nomads. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.